Okay, so the first task that you would uh, normally do in um, finding the density of an object is to figure out what the mass of your object is. So here is our metal that was found at the scene of the crime. So this is broken off from something. We're going to try to figure out exactly what this metal is. And then hopefully by identifying the metal type, we can then link it to the um, culprit and be able to narrow down our suspects from our suspect list in the police report. So the first thing is that is we need to make sure that our quadruple beam balance, which is what we use in chemistry to find the mass of um, an object. So to find mass, we use the unit measurement of grams. So this is called a quadruple beam balance because quad meaning four, there are four writers. So the back one is the hundreds, then the tens, and then the ones. And then you get to the numbers that are gonna be um, past the decimal and we use those numbers to get precise measurements of objects, substances, and chemicals in chemistry. So um, when you place your item on the pan, so that's what this is called, um, you're gonna see that the little arrow, which is pointing at zero, the zero means that it's leveled and whatever is being, whatever numbers are on here, that means that that is the measurement of your object on the pan. So when it goes up above the arrow, that means that the object on the pan, whatever's on the pan, it's heavier. Than what's over here. So to get this to go back down to zero, making it balanced, we're going to have to move these riders. So obviously we can tell that that metal, it's probably not anywhere near the hundreds, so we're going to leave the back rider alone. I'm going to move in just a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, so I'm going to move the tens to the ten window. Okay, so our arrow went down, which means that this is not anywhere near 10, so we're gonna move it back to zero. Then we're gonna move the rider down to two. Let's try two, okay. It's above the zero, which means it's still not heavy enough, so let's move it by two more. Okay, not quite there yet. Okay, five. Okay, so now when we get to six, we can tell, we saw that the arrow was going up a little bit slower, which means it's really close to that zero, but let's see if seven, okay. So because the arrow went down past the zero, that means that this seven is heavier than what's on the pan, so seven cannot be what's in the ones place. Okay, so before I move on to the last writer, I do not have anything in the hundreds, I do not have anything in the tens, so I'm gonna put three, to represent my ones. And then I'm going to put a decimal because I have other numbers that I need to um, focus on. Okay, so this is where you're going to move this rider very patiently and slowly because you're going to get to the very precise measurement of this. So I'm going to keep going. Okay, so I went past four and that went down past the zero, so that means this is too heavy. So let's go back towards point three. Okay, it's looking a little bit closer to zero, but it looks like it's not quite on there yet. So I'm just gonna smidge it over just a spit, just a little bit. Okay, so it's a little bit past zero now, so just a little tap. See if that does anything. And this is what I was saying earlier about this part being the patient part. Laying it even out. Okay, so we have 0.3, and then if you look at the tick marks here, we have each of those tick marks represents one. So the 0.3 is gonna go in the tenth place. So we're gonna put three, and I just realized, I don't know why I put three here, I meant six. Sorry about that. So this is the tenths. Okay. And then if we go back to our ruler, each of those little tick marks is going to be representing one. So it looks like the arrow on the silver part, it's one, two, three, four. So it's a little bit, it's way past four, not directly on that longer line, which is going to be our fifth number. So we're going to put four. So 
the hundredths. Now this last number, which is going to represent your thousandths, we say that you and your partner are going to have to kind of guess. So imagine 10 little tick marks in between the 4 and the 5. So personally to me, that looks like it's maybe on 8 or 9, but I'm going to go with 9. And that's going to represent my hundreds. Or sorry, my thousands. So that is the mass of our metal. That is our unknown metal that was found at the scene of the crime.